Australian censorship was the most repressive anywhere in the Western world. If you happen to see breasts bare, and certainly if you saw pubic hair, you'd just about fall out of your seat. We had in Australia in those days a censor, a man called Prowse. I didn't know anything about him much, except that he had one arm. When I was involved in censorship rousing, and Barry Humphreys would throw press conferences and say, I was sorry Mr. Prowse couldn't attend, uh, but I had heard that he would have given his right arm to be there. No, we didn't, we didn't censor anything. I'd say this is quite remarkable. We got rated the, the other day, two days ago, and we got an MA rating. And this is a film that takes the highlights of every single R-rated film ever made in Australia <laughs> and, and, and puts them into a R-rated package and it means that kids can go and see it. The, the, uh, the, uh, the censorship advice is extreme violence, extreme coarse language and extreme nudity and sex, MA. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the tagline for the film. <laughs> You know, I grew up. I grew up loving on a Majesty Secret Service, and meeting Lazenby was a blast. He was, um, he was fantastic. He opened the door, um, and uh, you know, he's got these. He's got twins, three-year-old twins. Obviously, he's still. He's not firing blanks, and um, <laughs> he uh, rendered them for the interview. He uh, he's he's staying at a home in Wimbledon. He opens the door, bare-chested, this massive grey hair, bed hair, pants down around his waist. And he, he says, do you need somewhere to park the trucks? And he goes and knocks on all his neighbours' doors who haven't seen him, never met him before in that state, to find places for us to park our trucks. <laughs> so you can't, that, I mean, that's a great Hollywood moment. Jaws was on at one theatre and 14 drive-ins, and we went in the next week and we took as much. Government agencies would actually stand at the border to stop these cans of film being seen overseas. <laughs> It's interesting to note in Australia, and I don't know if this is the same with any other country in the world, but our art house films were our mainstream films. Audiences embraced our art house films as our mainstream cinema, and our cinema that would be considered mainstream in any other country in the world was considered our B-grade cinema. Mm -hmm. And when you look at films like, uh, like In of the Damned and Road Games, they were still the biggest budgeted films being made in Australia up until that point. I don't think there'd been a bigger budget film up until In of the Damned, right? And certainly Road Games was the highest mm -hmm. budgeted film at that point, but they were still considered our B-movies. And I, I think that's very strange. I know, Tony, you have this kind of theory that the audiences were hoodwinked into thinking they should only embrace our historical epics and nothing else. Well, it was partly to do with, as again, you, you, you graze over in the, in the movie. I think it was the combination of the, the sort of the change of government, uh, Vietnam, sort of the, the anti-American feeling was prevalent at the, at the time, kids sort of reacting against conventional stuff, that whole period militated against the sort of commercial cinema that the genre filmmakers were focusing on and led the, 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 the audiences towards the more intellectually oriented or s supposedly intellectually oriented uh, uh, material. We were just unfortunate that the series of events that created the industry yeah, a new Gorton moving to Whitlam, the new government, all of these cultural changes were moved against conventional mainstream entertainment cinema. And it was the, 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 the right event at the wrong time, I think. Uh, and, we were, we, and that was the hoodwinking. The hoodwinking was, we can't make genre movies. Well, That's of course right. we can make, you've just seen that we can make genre. We can't make films as good as the Americans. Of course we can make, that is nonsense. It's like, well, we, we can't do it, so you shouldn't try to do it. Well, we did do it. We did it. We did it in some cases better. We did it more efficiently. We did it more financially successfully. But we kept being told, don't do it. And I suppose that was because the perception was that because many of the films didn't do all that well theatrically in Australia initially, and their success was, was largely international, and the powers that be that controlled the media through the government authorities who didn't want those films to be perceived as successful filtered and rewrote the history of that. And so now we've got to grab the history back. Well, I think, you know, you have to, any remake, I mean, you either take the sort of the sacrosanct, almost sort of religious view of cinema that great films shouldn't be remade, 
So in, in a certain way there's a part of me that says, you know, the hundred great classics are the hundred great classics, don't, don't remake them. But given that much as I like Patrick Harlequin and Survivor, they're not part of the, 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 the hundred great canon of movies, <laughs> uh, they're a little just, just. lower down the list than that. Uh, yes, I think they're capable of being remade. We, we spoke about possibly reimagining Patrick and giving it a kind of an orphanage kind of feel, making it bloodless but very creepy. And I think that's the way that cinema is going to go in terms of horror now, with um, all the Spanish horror and things like that, like films like Wreck and Orphanage. And I think that Patrick lends itself to it because Tony had a really interesting idea, and that's that you know, people aren't scared of getting on a plane and they're not scared of getting on a bus, but they're certainly scared of going into hospital. And maybe that's you know, where the, the central kind of um, fright moments from Patrick can come from. Uh, the, the ability to reimagine, reinvent, uh, and uh, tell a story anew for the eyes of a, of a, of a new generation. Uh, no great problem with that. They're great stories.